All right, today we're gathering with Ben, the co-host of Watch What, ha Watch what Crap Ends, which is frequently one of the top Bravo podcasts in the entire world. So I am, it's my, it's my pleasure to welcome Ben on the show today. I'm really excited to chat with him. I see him all over the charts, all over social media. Ben, it's great to meet you. How's it going? Oh my goodness, Gibson, it is great to meet you too. It's wonderful over here. And I feel like I'm talking to a celebrity because oh, I see you on my Twitter on my ex, I should say, at, like all over the place. We're still calling always, Twitter. <laughs> I know, it's still Twitter. I see, I feel like you get like regrammed. I see you like, I feel like on reunions. I feel like you get pull quotes everywhere. It's like, you are like a, you're like a star in the Bravo universe. We're, we're hustling, baby. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're hustling. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> um, all right. So today I, I am doing this like once a quarter, basically, now that I've, I've decided. I've done it with Danny Pellegrino and I've done it with Brian Moylan. And you know, I feel like at what things change so rapidly in Housewives, like that, like the feeling that we have about each franchise. So, yes. Before we jump into everything individually, how are you feeling overall about like the state of Real Housewives in general? I think in general, it's in a really good place. Like, I'm really happy with almost all the franchises. I feel like we will never get to that place where every single franchise is like firing on all cylinders. Like, it just feels like no. If we have one show that is having an exceptional season, then another show will be having a dreadful season. Like we can, I want to someday have the day where all of them are giving us like a plus seasons, but I think it's just, we can't expect that. And that's okay. And, um, you know, I think that right now the number of shows that are kind of not as strong is pretty low. And I think, so therefore I think it's actually, we're in a really good place with housewives. I agree. I agree. And, and I think that sometimes like right now, the public opinion is like skewed because the ones that are on are kind of one people aren't as universally excited about it and the other one yeah. so divisive. So it's you kind of forget that actually, I agree, a lot of the franchises are in a great space right now. So I think that, that it, it, we're fickle as fans. We're fickle. Oh, my goodness. It's like constantly changing. But I think that like if you look at overall, you know, the state of the housewives, like what we've been through over the past year, I mean... We're so blessed. <laughs> we really are. We really are. Okay, so let's, we have two Housewives currently airing. So let's start with Jersey. Scary place to start, maybe. Um, yeah. This season is the season, you know, the log line is sort of Teresa and Melissa are coexisting, where it's not about their fights anymore. Is that working for you? Um, I think it's working for me more than it seems to be for other people. Like, it's not amazing, but I'm still watching the shows and I'm entertained. Um. I I know a lot of people are like feeling like it's like, oh no, like this is we need a reboot or whatever. And obviously there's gonna be no reunion, so or uh, some different kind of reunion. I am still enjoying the show. Like I think as me too. A, 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 in terms of like shows that are like like at like a nadir, like I feel like we've seen worse, even from New Jersey itself. I mean, I think if you look at season five New Jersey, I would even argue season four New Jersey, even before Teresa yes. went to jail, it was boring. Mm -hmm. It was really boring. Am I allowed to curse on your podcast? Yes. Let Can it I fly. say boring as fuck? Because <laughs> <laughs> I really felt uh, there was a period of time where I actually thought New Jersey was the worst franchise out of all of them because mm. I thought it was so dull. And I think that now, like, it's it's kind of dysfunctional at the moment, but it's like it's got a really good roster, and um, they just have to figure it out. But um, I maybe not the best it's been, but I still am deeply entertained by it. Right. I also feel like because the Melissa Teresa thing was like kind of given this ultimatum this year, everyone else has really picked up the slack. I mean, yeah. To me, like the the Margaret Jackie stuff is very compelling to me. Same. Like like the Fudas are stepping it up arguably maybe too much but like they're too stepping much. it up yeah um fessler is like in the mix like being being the the yeah. messler and like i'm into it i re i really am i'm enjoying it i actually think that really i believe it or not my hot take is that marge and um jackie should have been the center of the season because that yeah. to me is like um that's like a real thing that's happening between the two of them like they're like their friendship is like changing and they don't know how to deal with it and it's falling apart and we've all been in that situation and i think we also like them together so it's yeah. sad to see them falling apart so i think that really should have been the center and i think that like the rachel food of it all like i enjoy rachel i like that she's stepping up but like the fact that we have centered on her getting mad at teresa because teresa called john a drug dealer it's just not like it doesn't have the same like 
no. versions of your mm. gravitas. You no, know? I mean it also incorporates the husbands too much. I'm sorry, like that, like too that much. directly involves them too much. Which is, I'm fine with them playing on the side. I don't need them to be at the center of of any season of, of Jersey. So Same. obviously, like you know, we are enjoying it, but the show is in flux overall. Yeah, in your ideal, I guess, like either in your ideal world or like what you think is the right way forward. Like, what does that look like to you? I don't know. I, I think if we have to make some casting changes, like so far based on the season, you know, maybe Danielle goes. I don't think that she's really been that impactful. However, we are about to enter the Danielle, um, the Danielle drama stretch, right? Like right. all the fighting is like, it's literally going to happen in like three days for us. So uh, I may take that back. I may take that back. <laughs> I feel like she's been sort of a non-entity this season. She has. Like enough of, the, enough of the bougie kids. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Now, Melissa Gorga is a tough one for me because I've always actually been on her side. Me I've too. never really found that Melissa has been the most compelling housewife, but I felt like she was in the fights with Teresa. I always felt like she was right. But I, I'm i like, do we get rid of Melissa Gorga? But it feels weird to get rid of Melissa Gorga. I really don't know. Honestly, I don't know what to do it, in this situation. Stumps, I'm stumped too. Like I, 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 I'm, I'm thinking similarly to you because I do kind of usually side with the Melissa, but Teresa is Jersey, I guess, in so many ways. I don't know. It's, it's yeah, I, it's, I don't know. I think that what has to happen is the producers have to sit down with this cast and be like, look, you guys all know how to play. You guys all know what the game is. You guys all know how to do this. You guys are all really good. We've given you a year where you can be in your feelings. You can be mad at each other. You guys now have to pull up. You guys have to shoot together. You guys have to figure this out because the show is suffering from it. And if you don't figure it out, we're just going to have to fire chomp, people chomp, no matter chomp. how iconic you are or how integral you seem to be to this franchise right. totally right i think that's it's a come to jesus moment yes. um all right the other one that's airing is dubai and you know it, it's been literally two years the, this, yes. this season two premiered basically exactly two years since season one premiered so it's lighter drama for the summer. I'm actually kind of enjoying the breeziness of it. I just don't feel the investment. You know what I mean? Mm. I think that the, the long pause between seasons really impacted that. Yeah. How are you feeling several episodes into Dubai season two? You know, I actually like it. I can't believe it because I too. thought the first season was bad. Like, and I was trying to like the first season. I was trying not to shit on it too much. I wanted to support it, but I felt like the first season, um, had a different energy. It almost felt like it was a different show that they re-edited to become a housewife show. And you can mm. always tell when they do that. Yeah. Um, I just was like, the first season, I was like, uh, but I felt like the cast members in their time off, they they heard the feedback from the fans, and then they also went to BravoCon and they sort of like learned how to like spice it up. And right. I feel like something is different this season. I feel like they are producing it properly. The energy seems right. So I'm actually really enjoying it so far. But I know what you're saying, it's sort of hard to it's hard to get invested in it because it's. it feels like season one was so long ago. But I know. sometimes with these shows that, that sort of stumble out the gate, and I'm thinking Dallas my, and Miami also, their season two is surprisingly very good because they kind of like realize that they stumbled out the gate and they don't want to like lose their chance. So they right. really, So I kind of feel like that's where we're at right now with Dubai. And the expectation is low, to be honest. Like, And that's not yeah. even like shady. It's just like, the, like people weren't super... Th- like pumped about this season but i think that's why i'm feeling pretty good about it because it's just sort of like all right chanel chanel and lisa have a fallout at some point like i'm kind of intrigued by that i'm curious what happened yeah. stanberry to me is a huge star still like i think that she yes she's still finding her footing in the housewives terrain like i mean ladies of london was effortless for her but like mm-hmm. she's such a mega star to me like she is just like irresistible so She's so much better this season, honestly, because yes. she was so amazing on Ladies of London. Although season three, Ladies of London, she was a bit of a sourpuss. I have to, I have to admit. Okay. But um, I think she came in last season on Dubai and was actually like not great. She was like kind of almost like annoying. I think mm-hmm. she was doing this whole thing with Sergio where they were like influencers and they were being silly on TikTok. Uh, and I just found work. like all their entire storyline was not very compelling, and she wasn't that interesting. But this season. She's just like outright mean to Sergio. And that's like, it's great. <laughs> it's fun to watch. <laughs> and also he's finally like, he's still there. 
which is whatever, but he's he'll walk away from the group scenes when it starts to spice up. I've noticed, and like, yeah, we we need that. We need we need that to happen. <laughs> yeah, he's really like Sergio is like one of the most annoying husbands on any of the shows. <laughs> like, he's very sweet. But I'm like, really, sir? <laughs> like, uh, please, please, yeah. I can't. Right. Okay. So the next section, is, Ben, is going to be the next two that are going to that are finished filming and pre preparing for them to come back. Orange County is obviously on deck. I mean, I've never felt this excited for a season of OC. I agree. I've yeah. never felt this excited for OC. I okay. So here is my hot take. Do it. And okay. So I'm going to ask you to go into your housewives archive a little bit and slash time machine. Okay. So, you know, like I said before, New Jersey was really bad for a long time. And then, um, and then there was a season, I think it was actually the, the season when Siggy Flicker showed up. Oh, sorry. And I know, I know, I know. I, I'm sorry to invoke Siggy Flicker <laughs> right now, but it was actually like kind of a funny season. And then the next season, Margaret showed up. Yeah. And that was a really, it was actually a, great season and then the next season was when i think jennifer and jackie showed up and when jennifer and jackie showed up everyone was like oh my god this is so good and bravo was saying it's the jersey comeback season but the truth was that jersey had sort of started to come back two seasons prior but it takes like two seasons for people to kind of decide to come back to something i feel like mm -hmm. that's my way of saying that i think that's what's happening this season with orange county and that i actually felt perhaps controversially, that the Noella season of Orange County was excellent. Mm -hmm. And I felt like last season of Orange County was excellent. And I think it's like we had two good seasons, but people weren't willing to say Orange County is good anymore. But now, here we are. Now we're going to be three seasons into a renaissance. And I think that now this is going to be the season where we're like, we're everyone's ready to embrace it. I think that's a really good parallel to make, to be honest. Like, I think I, th I think you're right. It's like sort of Heather came, which was like, okay, Heather's back. But I, to me, that season missed the element of like somebody who could really match Heather. And Tamara was that person last year. And Tamara yes. came in guns blazing last year. Exactly. Like, I mean, come yep, on. Yep, yep. And it, it was a great season. But now I feel like Tamara, like towards the end, I felt she had dialed it like a little bit to an 11. Whereas like we go to like, now I feel yes. like she's going to recalibrate just slightly. We have, there's just so many points of intrigue this season. It's, it's yes. almost like overwhelming. It's like a mix of new school and old, old school. There's like some great, just like friendship drama that happens. There's the Shannon, Alexis, John Jansen, love triangle, breakup stuff. There's and an, FBI, an FBI, something. There's a DUI. Like it's, it's over the cup overflow with this season. Yeah. For OC. It feels like there's so much like, like I am. I think this is gonna this is gonna be a, a great season for OC. Like you and you can really tell from from trailers. Like you can tell watching the OC trailer, it was like every single scene had something going on. And like the when you watch a, a real Housewives trailer, one of the keys is to look at like the setups. And if you can see like, oh, it's a lot of fighting, but it's all from like the same party, you can sort of see it's from the same party. Like, okay, it might be a one dimensional season. But when you see it's from like all these different scenes and all these different things happening, you're like. Oh, this is, we don't even know what this is going to be like. We don't even know. It's going to be all yeah. time. But like, you, you remember the trailer though for this, they literally flash the different places that they go. Yes. Like they go on four different trips. It's like, I know. <laughs> that's wild. <laughs> okay. So OC, not much else to say. We're just very excited about it. Like, yes. let's go. Salt Lake City, I believe is done filming. They're coming. They're kind of, they're going to follow up a landmark season for that show with the reality of aunties of it all. Like it just ended with this bang. That was, I think one of the bigger housewives moments of all time uh, ever. Right. Like it just, yeah. it, it proved that housewives still had it in them to deliver something like this. Obviously Monica is not returning. We haven't heard that much about what went down during filming, which I'm, I kind of like that about it. How are you? Yeah. Are you excited about the, the return of salt Lake later this year? I am excited because they are so chaotic. They they do put on a good show. Um, I, I I am also like preparing myself. It just cannot live up to last season. We yeah, just you're know right. It. And like that's that's. I feel I almost feel bad for the show because I feel like people are going to be like it's just so slow. It's so boring this season. And I just want like people to be like, look, last season was something so special. Like to think that season four of OC. Could it be better than season two of I'm not OCM of SLC? It could be better than season two of SLC. And season two, 
I thought we would never be able to top totally. that on Salt Lake. Totally. And on top of that, the trailer for last season, I just want to say, despite everything I just said, the trailer for last season did not indicate in any way, shape, or form that it would be as good as it was, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I think, I have no idea what this season is going to be like. Um, I think it, I my expectations are a little low. It's really, it's just really hard to follow up a, a blockbuster season. My expectations are low, but I just have such immense faith in the core four of the show that has emerged yeah. in, in Whitney, Heather, Meredith, and Lisa of just like, they can mix it up pretty much like nobody else right now. Like, I mean, yeah. they, they've they shown us every witch alliance that we could possibly hope for within them. And like, I just think that they understand what it takes to make a good show. I just, there, there's something like intrinsic to them as a group. And so, yeah, my expectations are lower, but I still kind of just feel like they know how to give us good TV. Like even they without do. that hard, you know? The there's a weird part of me that worries that they're going to try to go for like um, like a unity moment, yeah. like post Monica. You know, this happens every now and then, you know, after season Can't last. six of uh, Vanderpump Rules, which was a big, messy season. That was the Faith and Jack yes. season. The following season was when the cast was like, we're going to be adults. And it's like, uh, like sometimes casts do this where they like react and they want to like rise above, and that's usually kind of boring. So I'm hoping that they don't do like a unity thing, like a, like look, we're we're a sisterhood. I just I want them to be to stay messy. Same, and you know what, Mary Cosby is back in a big capacity, so she'll she'll say something. Yeah, Mary Cosby. Yeah, I think yeah. as a friend of, like, that was such a great lane for her. Totally. She's back as a friend of, right? I Still think so. Of? Yeah, I think it's a yeah. friend of. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, all right. So next we have the ones that are currently filming in various stages. So I think New New York is kind of at the tail end of their filming. We have not heard much about that either. But I mean, I, I kind of consider this to be like a different show than OG New York. I think it's their sophomore season, really. I, I mean, it mm -hmm. is for all of them. Um, what are your expectations about this cast second season it's really hard i did not like the reboot okay like and I why tried. did why not i felt like the reboot was a little flaccid i felt like um i felt like it was actually largely bravo's fault i feel like bravo in a response to what had happened with the og and and i have to say like full disclosure og roni is like my favorite of all the it's housewives. bible it's, it's so yeah it's bible so like i understand i come in with a bias but I felt like Bravo tried to go from a tone of like, can you believe these people are acting this way in public to a tone of like, these women are fabulous. Don't you yeah. just want to be their girlfriends? Like, don't you, don't you just want to like hang out with him and see what's on, like what it's like to live like <laughs> the fabulous life of Jenna Lyons. And I'm like, no, I actually just really like seeing like messy, rich people who are too deluded Drink to understand too their bad behavior. Yeah. Um, but I think that they may go through a Dubai thing. I think that maybe they hear the feedback and realize they have to kind of like um, spice it up a little bit more. Um, Jessel was a great find. And I, like, find. I feel like Jessel's great. Jenna Lyons, I feel like is fascinating. Like she may not be a great housewife, but she's at least herself. She's like authentically herself, right? For sure. Yeah, she's like an enigma that they don't know always what to do with. Which I think, think is a good factor to have in there. Yeah, um... Bryn, I'm still like, I don't know about Bryn. Like there's sometimes I feel like Bryn is great. And there's sometimes where she just drives me crazy. I like, like the, like the, the very effective flirtation, like ah, everything's like, like she'll pick up like a coaster and she'll be like, oh my God, you can put a drink on this. You can put me on it. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, we get it. <laughs> I mean, she, she definitely plays a character sometimes. And I think that that. I hope she saw some of that feedback. I think for the, all of them, there's like a little bit of feedback that I would kind of like them all to pay attention to, but not not overcorrect, just sort of like shift, you know? But yeah. I, I am a little bit, I think what I'm nervous about is somebody like Jessel, who like, she was such an amazing find, but a lot of it was kind of unintentional humor, which is like mm -hmm. some of my favorite kind of housewives humor. It's like Barlow, yeah. it's Dorit when at their best, like they're unintentionally funny. And yes. I don't, I hope Jessel stays that way. I hope she remains herself and just Same. like, but you never know. She could lean into the things they think that she thinks the audience wants out of her. So, and and like same with like an Aaron, Aaron or Cy, like they were kind of villainy at some points their first season because nobody else wanted to be that. Mm -hmm. Do they still want, are they still willing to be that role? You know, because th this show definitely needs people to go there. 
Yeah, like the show was at its best when they went on vacation and yes. they had the stupid fight with Uba's phone, but it was like it was a little bit realer. It was like it was a stupid fight, but no one was I, I felt like we were not getting um sidetracked in um endless scenes of trying right. on clothes and like glam and also like Psy drive drove me nuts. I I have Psy could come back and be really entertaining if she just leans into being cranky. Right. And, but <laughs> right, like right, right. <laughs> leans into being cranky instead of being an influencer. Like when she would brought she brought all those bags to like, the Hamptons or whatever. It was just I don't know. Like it just it didn't really have connective tissue the whole season. But you know, season two, th again, things happen yeah. in season two. Yeah, I agree. I just think that I think the general thing is that they're all too afraid to be unlikable, which is like the I think the exactly. like worst quality in any reality star, to be honest. Like you have to be mm -hmm. willing to like look bad. But you know, we we're getting Rebecca Minkoff, who's a Scientologist, famous designer. Who knows oh. what somebody like that would want to give us? Because if she doesn't want to be unlike, like somebody like that, definitely doesn't want to be unlikable. She's a whole brand, a multi million dollar brand to protect. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Although Sai, you saw that Sai had that hot mic moment on the Jeff Lewis show where she yes. said that Rebecca was very boring. Good but then pull. again, that's Sai. That's also Sai saying that. And it's, it's true, like, but you were boring. So if you're boring and you're saying someone else is boring, does that mean that they're actually interesting? I don't know. Maybe she doesn't have the best judge of entertainment value. So exactly. TBD. Okay. Um, Potomac. They are filming right now. They had their worst season ever last season. Ever. And I mean, and Potomac has been one of my, in that mid run, like three to six, like that was one of my favorite franchises to exist. Oh, yeah. And you know, I kind of expected them to wait a beat and like figure out the cast or whatever, but they made quick changes. They jumped right back into filming. We just said goodbye to Robin and uh, Candace and NECA and NECA. And, NECA. and um, you know, I think that that actually gives me hope that like they are feeling that like they had women in their back pocket who would be good for the show and they just jumped right back in. I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm trying to be optimistic. Yeah, I thought they were going to take a beat also. I wonder if Karen getting a DUI made them decide, oh, we got to get back into this. True. I mean, I do think that they are a cast that generally seems to know, like, okay, like, we know what, what to give the people. Like, like the core four there, or the core group there, now minus Robin, now minus Candace, they did seem to know, they were like Salt Lake City. Like, Giselle, sure. Karen, um, uh, what's her face? Ashley, Giselle, like Ashley, Karen. Yeah, yeah, those three. Like they all like they all knew how to do it. I feel like this last season. First of all, I think there was a failure of of uh, on the producing and like there was so many gags happening on screen, so many like cartoony things, so many silly things. It was it was painful to watch. It was probably one of the worst seasons we ever had from any franchise. I agree. Um, the cast, the ca the cast was having fights about things that I didn't really even understand, like. Robin and Candace's feud didn't really make sense to me. Like, why are they feuding? You and know? also the and also the one moment they had, there was like they went to coffee and it's like, let's fucking clear this up. They refused yeah. to do that. And it was like, okay, we got we went nowhere. The the Wendy NECA stuff was like, what the fuck are we talking about here? Like, I just it was sort of interesting at first, but it just kept on going. I thought yeah. like Wendy, I've I loved Wendy when she first came on. But the first few seasons she came on, I really loved her. But um I felt like Wendy is becoming more and more self-produced and mm -hmm. it's like hard to, it's hard to like when, when they do, when characters do that, when people do that, it's hard to get into them. It's hard to latch on. It's hard to feel connected to them. And that's one of the reasons why I loved old school uh, Roni. One of the reasons why I've loved Salt Lake city is that they just kind of put it all out there and then yeah. just see where it takes them. Yeah. Yeah. I think Wendy had a really bad last season, but I, I've seen, I saw some clip of, Wendy and Giselle like hugging or at her birthday party wow. dancing or something. So it's like, it looks like production got in their ear and was like, listen, you guys got to mix it the fuck up and you can't refuse to engage with one another. It's not, it's not good TV. So I'm hopeful mm -hmm. about that. And um, you know yeah. what? I think Candace will take some time off. I, I, I bet you she eventually returns to the show in a couple of years. Robin, I think she kind of rode that wave longer than I expected her to anyway. So yeah, Robin really, you know, there was a period of time when I really liked Robin, but um, yeah, she just, season two. yeah, the past two seasons, she really sort of swan dived. Right. All right. Atlanta. They're finally filming. They took a long pause. We said goodbye mm -hmm. to Candy, Marlo and Sonia. 
a few new additions, Porsche's back. Like when I saw that at final announcement, I was like, okay, we're filming. These are the people that are coming back. Cynthia is a friend of, I was like, you know what? I'm excited for Atlanta. Like Porsche and Kenya together. That is yeah. exciting to me. It's, it's well, hard to know. Yeah, it's hard to know because there's a big question mark in Kenya right now. Well, especially with Ken yeah, Kenya, it's like, is she gone? Is she not gone? Yeah. You know, after this whole like kerfuffle that happened over the weekend with like, did she do revenge porn against the new girl? I don't know. Oof. And yeah. She did that. That's really bad. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, you know, Atlanta is also like I think that the shows that were both on live support were Potomac and Atlanta over the past year. And um I like that they took a lot of time to really figure out what to do with Atlanta. Atlanta, I don't know, it just sort of, I feel like the, the difference with Potomac and Atlanta is that Potomac had been going along just fine and then right. all of a sudden just collapsed. Whereas Atlanta, honestly, I think for the past like three or four years has been not great. Iffy, yeah. 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 It's been, they're, they're about, I think again, one of the challenges with the Real Housewives is that as the stars become bigger and bigger, they start to, they start to protect themselves and they start to self-produce. Mm -hmm. And um, I worry about that with Atlanta. It really seems to happen a lot on Atlanta. Um, I worry about Portia. Like Portia is one of the best housewives we've ever had. She's so good. But I do worry that Portia self-produces a, a bit. And I remember in Portia's last season, they went on a trip and she just up and left like a day early because right. she didn't want to be there anymore. And I thought, Mm, I don't love that. Right. Yeah. I, 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 I think my hope with it is that like Portia and Kenya just saw that, that they were sort of empowered as sort of the two faces of this, this kind of slight reboot of Atlanta. Like they were the queen bees and they could really carry it. You know, I mean, I agree about Portia. I, I think that she, her personality is like irresistible and big enough for me to like, still like for her to still be able to just like make me laugh. And like, I hope, I mean, we better hear a lot about the Simon stuff that, that mm -hmm. there's, there's shit going on in her life, you know? And it's like, we can't, if we're not going to see it, then like, I don't know what we're doing here. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we waited long enough to start filming it. Um, yeah. I think with Atlanta, it's been frustrating because I want it to be good so badly because it historically yeah. was like just such an amazing show. And it just, I've been lying to myself a little bit over the past couple of years. Like, oh no, it's had its moment, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah you always do. Yeah. Like, I do that too. Like, no, no, it's a, but, but it's not the same. It's not, I mean, the thing is with Atlanta is that like a lot of times Atlanta will be funny because they give great, you know, interviews. They're, they're, yes. they're, a lot of times they're really funny, but sometimes they fail to actually have storylines that are interesting. Mm -hmm. And so what happens for me is that like after you get through the, you know, the first like four or five episodes, it's like, okay, I'm sort of like, it's been fun to laugh at these interviews, but like, what am I really watching now? It's sort of like these storylines that kind of like just sort of meander. They're like trying to like find something, but they're not really, it's like the people are not really connecting with each other, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's and tough. I think that, I think one of the through lines of some of the best franchises we've just, we've talked about today are like, they do have this really solid core of people. I think Atlanta has to find that core to put back together. You know what I mean? You can yeah. have people that come in and out every season, but you have to have these people that we can depend on seeing and who are going to deliver, you know? And have like a like a real um, like connection with each other. Absolutely, yeah. All right, the uh, last one is that is filming, our second to last franchise to talk about is Beverly Hills. Yes. Last season was the first season in a while for Beverly Hills that didn't fully like deliver on its promise for me. Like it, it was, I feel like, for the past like four years, there's been like, I, I've called it like sort of a, a single, single issue season where it's like, mm -hmm. it was LVP and Puppygate. It was uh, Denise Richards and, and that whole, and that whole thing. It was Kathy Hilton. It was Erica Jane. Like those were like four consecutive seasons that was out of order, but you know what I mean? Yeah. And last season was supposed to be Kyle and Mauricio and it sort of was, but then it sort of wasn't, you know what I mean? Like there was yeah. more going on. How did you feel about last season of Beverly Hills? I actually, I liked last season more than I thought I was going to. Okay. I, um, I actually really enjoyed it, but um, it's weird. Beverly Hills feels so staid compared to so many of the other franchises these days. Like, I just feel like, um, I think I kind of feel like in some ways we're, we're like, we have these newer franchises that are understanding how to play the game in terms of like putting out good shows like Salt Lake City, Miami, which I'm sure we'll get to soon. Mm -hmm. And you have Beverly Hills, which still feels like a little, I don't know, there's something kind of like, uh, like old fashioned about it. 
Right. Um, it's weird. Like, I know what you're saying. There's not like, a lot of times I'm like, what's happening on this show? Like, nothing's really happening, you know? And yet I'm entertained and I'm into of it. It's course. just surprising that that's the, that is like the number one housewife uh, franchise right now. I know. I know. And I think that the Erica Jane stuff really built it up and they have had some like really kind of intriguing things. Yeah. Um, you know, what, we're not going to have Crystal next season. She's not, she was asked not to come back. Did you care about that? Did you, were you kind of whatever about it? I was a little sad. I like Crystal, but Me too. She, she, I mean, she was a real late bloomer on this season. She was like almost nowhere the first, first mm -hmm. several weeks. And the, the problem is that she is a little reluctant to jump into the mix. And uh, she really gives more friend of energy as a result. And, you know, she's talked about, like, she talked about this last season that one of the reasons why she doesn't speak up as much is because she's so in her head with her eating disorder that it mm -hmm. actually prevents her from jumping into the mix. So that's fascinating to me. And, you know, she has, like, glimmers of being a great housewife, but... I think she's just a little too reserved to be to to keep the diamond for another year. I know. I, I really love her as a person. I just almost wonder if we never really fully got to see like the real Crystal yeah. on the show. You know, whether that was the edit or just herself holding her back or a combo. I just kind of feel like there's this other version of Crystal that exists in the real world, like amongst Dang. her friends that we just never really got to see. Like I'll see videos of her like dancing at rap concerts and I'm like, where's this person? You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, she probably doesn't feel like she fully connects with yeah. the rest of that group yeah. i mean she's like very snarky and very sarcastic but then in a group scene we don't really see much of that yeah you know? she, and she never had like a full like younger ally like who she could really no. like yeah you know what i mean she never really got that um so next season kathy's back as a friend jennifer tilly is a friend and bosma mm. st john is joining as a new housewife she's like this like iconic marketing executive who's worked at like netflix and beats and all these places she seems like kind of a legend i never really heard of her Mm -hmm. interesting mix to add to the show <laughs> yeah i mean i think having kathy as a friend of is great kathy is hilarious yeah. so that's always good she brings humor to beverly hills that's not there otherwise exactly jennifer tilly i mean i love i love me some jennifer tilly i don't know how she will be as a friend of i mean we saw bits of her which was always like fun because it was like oh look there's jennifer tilly but like as an actual friend of <laughs> right. like not sure but i'm open to her because i love her and the new girl i have no idea about the new girl um but yeah. I guess we'll see. It's just yeah. Beverly Hills is always strange. I feel like, again, people are usually, they're much more, they just like hold back a lot, a lot more, you know? They do. They do. And the last thing about Beverly Hills before we jump to Miami, which is the last one, you know, Dorit didn't have a great last season. And I think that for some reason, Beverly Hills, also the contract negotiations feel a little bit more public. Like we kind of hear about that stuff. And, it, yeah. it, you know, there was a lot of smoke that like maybe Dorit wasn't coming back. You know, she had a bad season, whatever. She, she got to show us something. Huh. Just just right on time. Her and PK announced a separation. And yes. there we go. And she's locked into the show again. So how do you feel about Dorit? I've, I've seen something about her and Kyle are arguing this season. So it's sort of like we kind of have two things going for her now. It's I'm kind of excited yeah. for her. I mean, it looks like Dorit is like pulling up. So I spoke to someone okay. who spoke to someone who is on Beverly Hills in a certain capacity. <laughs> so this is second, the truly secondhand gossip. We'll, um, we'll take it. But it wasn't like, oh, I spoke to someone who spoke to someone who spoke to someone. I literally spoke to someone who said, oh, I just spoke to this person. And they said that Dorit is only on for eight episodes. So huh. now I don't know if this person, like, I don't know, you know, Usual disclaimers, the person I spoke to may have heard it wrong, mm -hmm. and the person who said it may not have had the right information. But hmm. this is the gossip that I heard two days ago. Um, it seems that seems weird. I think that like it sounds like they were gearing up for a full fledged Dorit season. So That's I don't know if I believe it. But I mean, maybe now, it could be one of those things. It, it could be one of those things, Ben, where it's sort of like she got an eight, she got an eight episode contract or something. Prove that you're worth more. Prove that yeah. you deserve more. You know Bravo what I mean? will do that for sure. Yeah, I I could see it. Yeah, I would. Um, I would love to see a feisty Dorit season, and I'd love to see her going up against Kyle. I think that Kyle has compelling. Yeah, and Kyle has also really benefited from not like for being protected by her group. You know, for season mm -hmm. after season after season, they'll sometimes like fake go after her, 
but to show that they're willing to go after her, but they don't really go after her like really hard. Sutton kind of, I guess, is the, is the closest that we've gotten. Um, yeah. And it's hilarious because Kyle, it feels like Kyle is always trying to control the narrative, but she always picks the losing horse. And <laughs> like, you know, she, I think that Kyle always thinks she's going to come out on top, but then someone else comes out on top and it frustrates her every single season. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. All right. Last one. It's not filming or airing right now. It had, we, it, it I think the last season finished in like March or April, Miami. It's Coming not off, filming. It's not filming yet. So wow, that's shocking. Yeah. I mean, they had said there was some report that they were going to be on a longer pause between seasons because they usually film during the summer. Um, yeah. And there was going to be like a, a cash shakeup, but I, uh, one, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know because I was going to say it was coming off as a amazing three season run like since yeah. being brought back it's been essentially a perfect housewife show in my opinion with this You're great so right. big balanced cast whatever friends of that pull more than their weight like it's amazing i don't know why i would ever need a reboot like is it a ratings issue i don't know what it is maybe I mean, it could be a ratings I, thing but like i can understand maybe if they're delaying shooting because maybe maybe like atlanta having to you know be have a be on pause be pushed change the whole schedule so like well we're not going to film it until we need to, like maybe it's a scheduling thing right but i mean miami is so so strong i mean you're right it's been three excellent seasons um i would argue that this last season wasn't quite as good as the two that came before it but it still was a great season and like nothing should be changing it. if you're going to take away if you're going to lose someone like maybe dr nicole maybe she like she was really good her first two seasons and the last season was fine. But like, you know, I think Dr. Nicole needs to like bring it in a different way. Like, I think that mm -hmm. she, she has so much potential and she, ha she like checks so many boxes as a housewife, you know, I think, I think maybe distracts from the fact that like there could be more to give from her or to get from yeah. her. Um, but, but I don't, I wouldn't even get rid of her. I mean, I think no. they have such a well-balanced cast. I think you have Larsa who is ridiculous and thirsty. You've got Lisa who's so self-involved Alexia, I love Alexia. Like she's like I'm endlessly fascinated by her. Yeah. I, I love the way that Alexia um like talks and reacts and, oh my God. and emotes. You know, like she's hilarious to me. Um and then you have like Julia who gives a whole different kind of vibe that is like a nice balance for the whole group. And then again, you got three different Adriana, friends. Adriana, like, come on. Adriana, I mean, Marisol is not always amazing, but like it's fine. We can keep Marisol. And Kiki, uh, it's just it's yeah, it's just such a it's, good show. It's a great show, and I, yeah, the only thing that I could think about is ratings or like wanting to like mix it up. But like, I just feel mm -hmm. like they mix it up enough. Um, and the thing because they're not filming, we're missing out on Alexia and Todd's. I know separation or divorce or whatever's going on. She she just recently said that she's still sleeping with him, so I don't know what's going on there. But like, I'd love to see it on camera. Yeah, why are we missing that? That seems like such a major thing. Um, also. Uh, we should point out that Miami is probably the best shot of all these shows. It is oh my like God. gorgeous. Oh, it's and they it's beautiful, vibrant colors, but they also put like a lot of effort into making every shot look like every setup look just like really sexy and beautiful and Miami ish. It's wonderful. It's delicious to watch. It really is. Yeah, I mean yeah. they they, they got to get those cameras up soon because I'm I'm Miami might be my favorite right now. I I mean I, it it hits differently than all the others. I know. I think Salt Lake City is my current yeah. favorite because that last season was so good. But right. Miami, I think, is like my, Miami had three consistent seasons where Salt Lake City was like up, and then like season three was fine, like, like a little weird. It was like a it was it was like an inconsistent dark. season. Yeah, and you know, I have I have a theory, Gibson, which is, that, is that if um like I think that because they had to fire Jenny um in the beginning mm -hmm. of of season three it messed up their whole casting and so then the whole season three was sort of like out of whack because they had to sort of bring in that. these friends ups and everything so um i think like it's really you have to get like your you have to get your ducks in a line before you start shooting you totally know? otherwise it gets, he, it gets funky and you know what like back to Salt lake today for a second angie k is one of the biggest surprises i've she, went, she, go, she went for like a pretty forgettable friend of like kind of annoying edit and now she's like a solid presence on this show all of a sudden. I'm like, you know what? Good for you. Good for you. 
She and you know what? I was worried for her because in the beginning people were like, like Angie K, she's so thirsty, and everyone just cared about Monica. But by the end of the season, I think that Angie K really earned her spot. Like people really totally came agree. to love her. Her ridiculous. She's so ridiculous, and I think that she's actually she seems very sweet. She sent us a little card, by the way. For um, I think she sent us a holiday card that was really so sweet of her. <laughs> jealous, jealous. Did it did it mention that she was Greek on there at, at any point? It did because okay. we called it, she. You know she had like that. You know she has that like silver shiny silver top that she mm -hmm. wears, and we called her like C three PO or something like that. And so she sent us a Star Wars card with like a little Greek flag on it. Okay, That's it's giving in, cool. it's giving in on the joke, and I love that. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, love that for her. Okay, well, we just got through nine Housewives franchises, Ben. So <laughs> I know it's amazing. <laughs> I feel like, again. I think I, I think that our discussion backs up our statement at the top that we're in a pretty good place as Housewives yes. fans. We really are. We really are. I think what so of all that group, Orange County is the one that looks like it's going to be like this is going to be an Orange County year. Every year an there's like another. Yes. This will be an Orange County. What well, we're going to be cautious about, cautiously optimistic about Salt Lake City. Yes. Befuddled about Miami. Like, what the fuck? Why why is this like not already like filming? That's ridiculous. Beyond. Yep. And then um hoping for the best for the rest, right? Hoping for the best for the rest. That is <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, well, Ben, this has been so much fun chatting with you. Like, I'm just so glad we got to connect. I mean, you and Likewise. Ronnie are you you and Ronnie are such icons in this space that I've just entered. So it just, oh it's just it's awesome to get to connect with you. It really is. Thank you so much. You're so sweet. This was so fun. Would love to do it again. And yes. I will see you on social media. Yes. And how often how often do you guys release episodes? Like um, every day? They're like every, every day. day. Wow. Every day. It's sort of like right now we're in like a weird spot because um, Bravo does not have too much stuff on right now. It's like they don't. Low deck. They don't. Yeah. Two housewives. I think that's like it, right? Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, we're we're doing other stuff. But we're, we're, we're doing actually House of the Dragon recaps right now. Oh, which, fine. Really dovetails nicely with the Real Housewives, I have to say. <laughs> oh, does it? Give me the give me the quick log line on that. Well, you know, House of the Dragons is just like feuding feuding people, and most of them are blonde. So <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they're dragons. They're breathing fire on each other, and it's just like mass casualties. It's just like a a good Real Housewives season, you know. <laughs> It's like if Alexia breathed fire, basically. Like, yeah, a lot arguments. of them do look like Alexia. <laughs> it's actually very <laughs> funny. Obsessed. Um, everybody listen to Watch Our Crappins wherever you get your podcasts and uh, Ben thank you so much for joining us thank you for having me yeah I want to gab 